Super Smash Bros. Melee has a competitive scene which spans the entire globe. For years, the nucleus of the community has been North America. Players regularly travel from around the world to compete at some of the biggest American tournaments. The Big House, Genesis, Evo. From Canada to Mexico, Japan to Europe, many have come to test their might on Yankee soil and some have managed to prove their worth. But one region has gone mostly unnoticed for decades, lying in wait to prove themselves on the main stage. Geographically isolated from the rest of the world, Australia has long been its own insular community, rarely making the voyage across the open ocean. But recently, the entire country has been put on the map. Young and energetic, this is the story of a player who has made the voyage across the seas to represent Australia against some of the greatest players in the world. This is jo oh, oh, So, am I ready? Oh, they're ready. Alright, full haymaker. <laughs> My first impression of him was great because he's just really charismatic and really funny and also very sweet. Um, he's just like, he's just kind of like a winning combination of a, of a guy. Side to side. Oh, oh, like this. Oh, I think I got it actually. Josh is just an absolute nut. This is for you, bro. Oh, it's stuck to my skin. Oh, oh, oh. let me help you. Let me help you. That, that's it's actually stuck. legit. I have to help you. Yeah, it's stuck to my skin. Be careful. He's, he's very effortlessly cool. And he's just super funny. He's very easy to talk to. And uh, he said it in my interview too, but he just loves gaming, man. If any really, really big teams want to pay for my visa and sponsor me, Please, I love gaming. <laughs> he's also just a really jovial, funny guy. Uh, he's got good, you know, kind of screen presence. How was this supposed to help me get any better at Melee? Melee? Just do one of these. Feels like, I think, for a lot of spectators and for a lot of onlookers looking for someone to root for, he feels like kind of the complete package from that perspective. Take one, Take one yeah. Why are you double clapping, dude? I just Because you choked you know, it? Just in case I'm like... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's true. My tag is Josh Man. My name, my comment is a shock, Joshua Lyris. Um, and I've been in the scene for oh, like seven years now. When I started playing Smash properly, this new kid came to our school. I mean, that's exactly when Smash for the 3DS came out. And I was just like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm pretty good. I fucking play Captain Falcon or whatever. I'm doing a couple nairs here and there. And he's like, dude, no, like there's like a better game than this. I'm like, no, nah, you're fucking with me. Show me the dock and we were just like, dude, we gotta fucking get a GameCube right now. Honestly, I just like how the scene looked more than anything, to be honest. Just like how close everyone was and how exciting it was. I was just like, dude, I just wanna be on the setup with these guys. This looks so cool. But I was like, he, if he didn't move to that school, I don't think I ever would have like gone down this life path, to be honest. Like, his name's Muhammad. That guy changed my life. Like, he doesn't even realize it though, which is the crazy thing. Would have been like 17 or 18 at the time. He came to Battle Arena Melbourne and I was at home and I just sit there on my phone like watching the stream or whatever. Um, and we had crew battles. And that, that's back when like today crew battles were really, really like, and then something like Fox Sydney, Melbourne's the best, that kind of stuff. And Josh filled in in the last slot for the crew battle in Victoria versus Sydney. And he came in with four stocks against our, as Fox, against one stock of our, like a guy called Galton, who was Captain Falcon mate. And Tom was like a top player at the time, really good. And Josh managed to just knock out four stocks, ruthlessly pops off on this guy. And I'm sitting there watching my phone and I'm like, he hates this kid so much. Like, who does he think he is? He shouldn't be happy. Like, he doesn't deserve that. So, 
he originally started with Melee and then kind of got good at PM and started like kind of farming his locals and stuff like that and kind of by proxy became like top three in the country if not the best player in that space. BM was a wild radio, dude. That game is fucking crazy. The unknown doesn't phase me anymore, you know? Because when you got Squirtle like doing magic tricks on you for the first time ever when you go to an international tournament, you just get steeled. That was all right though. Like it, it helped me like adapt really fast, which I think was like a huge plus from playing that game. I actually loved that game for ages. Yeah, I had like a really good rival through, he's like a player in Australia called Rizal. We would always go back and forth. And like, that was like my first time like having a rival for so long and like that really helped push me to like keep competing like that. So like that game starting me off was big for me, I reckon. When I started out, you just see all the Captain Falcon clips and you're just like, dude bro, it's not me, it's fucking crazy. For like the first six months, I'm like, about to boost me, I'm like, oh, you guys fucking see that? You just think you're the sickest cunt in the room. And then like, I just started losing to Foxes, I'm like, oh, that guy's pretty good. Um, and then someone's like, yeah, Fox is the best in the game. I'm like, ooh, I should play the best character in the game. First time I was like, this is like legit. I was, uh, the year prior at our major BAM or Battle Arena Melbourne, I came 33rd. And the next year I'm playing for a top eight spot winner side and um, against SD, who was like the best Fox in the country at the time. And it was last hit, last stock. And I just remember just being like, I can do this, you know, like I'm, I'm there, I'm already there. And then I hit the dash attack up smash and all my friends from New South Wales just rushed me like they all came up to me i was just like trying to shake his hand but i'm like getting like pushed around and shit i'm like boys give me two secs like i promise i'll be there in a sec oh, Zora pops up. oh my god they almost knocked the stage over jumping up there. nsw crowd look i've i've tried a fair few things that like get you pretty high but nothing hits quite the same with like earning that win and it's like that competitive rush of adrenaline you feel like when closing it out like that I remember just being, I couldn't believe it. I felt weightless. I ended up coming second at that tournament. From 33rd to second was massive for me. So that was sick. Yeah. There's the grab. Oh, the dash dance grab by Spud. This could be big. Oh, is this it? Uh, Spud has done it. Congratulations All right. to Spud. Congratulations, Spud. Uh, cleaning it up 6 1. 6 1, grand finals. Spud's got like this secret gamer gene that makes him get really good at things, even in like an anemic sort of practice scene. And he kind of proved it. Yoshi's, Literally, I cannot remember. No! The mother of God! You know, he came to like Emerald City and don't park because Aiden, you know, wanted to like bring out all always international people. And he, he kind of destroyed a lot of space animals. There's a set where he plays against Mike Hayes at Don't Park on the Grass, and Mike just, like, does not have a good time. There's another set where he plays against Fat Goku at Emerald City. Fat Goku does not have a good time, and you can see them think it's funny that they're getting swagged on and then realize that they aren't going to beat this guy. And then, the, like, the despair is, like, it, it, it fills their eyes, and it's very beautiful. So with the side avoided, B, yeah, what did the uh, smash there? And is this going to be it? Ooh. Down B? Yeah. Oh, down tilt. I think that's it. it. That is it. Oh, another just pausing. Another quit, yeah. But at least he got the fist bump in. I don't think you get to be as good as Josh without that sort of competitive fire that makes you want to earn it, you know? No one wants to be handed the first place medal. And that's kind of what it does feel like, I, I would imagine. Getting rank one in Oz was a very unceremonious thing for me because Spud was our rank one player for a very long time. And I always had been close game fives, you know, here and there, but I never got even one set. And then um, when he retired, you know, it was, it was kind of sad because like I never got to like earn that number one spot. And it kind of puts you in a spot where it's very easy to feel imposter syndrome because everyone's like, dude, you're the best easily. And I'm like, there's a guy who just retired who kind of fucks on me. So it's just like, that's kind of shit. And I'll never will know when I am better than the guy, right? That was like, I want to say Justice Slippy came out was around when Spud retired. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty sad, you know? Like that online era where it's just like, I'm winning everything. And it's just like, there is a player who can beat me, but he's just gone, you know? He, that was tough. I think to the competitor, maybe it's like, oh, I never got my crack at this guy, but you can still be the best. It's, it's not like beating Zayn is like, oh, well, you didn't beat Armada, so I guess you'll never be great. It's like, no, Zayn's also amazing, you know, arguably more now, who knows? It's uh, it's something that you can't really look at from the perspective of a, a viewer or like a fan. And it's something that's very special only to like top competitors, right?
I was honestly gonna give up with melee because I was kind of like the second best player at the time who was SA Nick. He was kind of wishy-washy with the game, didn't like online, didn't really want to compete anymore. And that was really hard for me because it was just like, I'd wanted nothing more than to improve and to play good players. But when like my best practice wasn't in it, I was like, this really sucks, you know? Um, then my mate's like, it was Nick actually. He's like, Josh, shut the fuck up, bro. He's just like, what are you gonna do, huh? You put this much effort in already, you're gonna quit now? It's like, you love this shit, dude. He's like, just play. You know, you're gonna live a normal life, are you? He's like, you dumbass. I'm like, true. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll keep playing. And then I worked harder than ever. It was, it was really hard. So I have nothing but respect for the people who believe in me and pushed me. The first tournament that I came for to America after COVID would have definitely been Summit 12, actually. I was a vote in, yeah, which was massive for me. Like me being able to just like be myself on the microphone. Yes, yeah, yeah, can't, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Taking that upset over Ginger kind of like really boosted like everything going on because people just knew who I was, right? Oh, you get the gram. It's oh, over! Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. And Sora. Sora's first set yeah. and smash the blue game Sora. He didn't like do well, quote unquote, because it's like it's only 16 people, like someone's gotta lose. Um, but I remember him playing, and every top player at the time who didn't really understand his skill level were really surprised. They were like, dude, this guy can keep up. I was really impressed with the way, even in his first Ghidorin set where he lost, but he kept getting all these grabs in neutral, which is something you really don't see that often in the Fox Moth matchup. He was forcing Ghidorin into Ghidorin's shield and then grabbing it, which is so much more easier said than done. Could have been it. Oh, he's he's so painting scary. out, he's painting out the, the, the grab attempts. Yep. Oh my goodness gracious. It's so scary though, yeah, pretty right close there, yeah. And the second yes. and only. Wow, wow. Yeah. damn. Folks popping off. Yeah. Honestly, I think America is like kind of like a beast of its own. Yeah, you just get whipped on for like all the shit stuff you do being in a small region and you're just like, oh, true, true. All right, I gotta fix that. Mango said it himself. He was like, yeah, you were fucking dog shit when you first came here. It's like, you were awful. I was like, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> it's like, you're going way better though. And that's just from mass playing and like having new mistakes I didn't even know existed exposed to me, you know? <laughs> Pick up. It out. So he didn't really start off great, which, you know, obviously could be very discouraging to a lot of people. But I think, um, again, just in speaking with him personally about this stuff is he's very committed to making melee work. It's the way he like used his time in the States was really important. And he went to stuff all the time. He went to locals. I think like the SoCal locals, like going from like really close to playing like Null to like beating Null pretty handedly now to like never ever like beating SUJ to like finally taking a set off him. Like those like, all those locals are so fucking helpful. Um, it was more like those than a major tournament for sure where I felt the most improvement. I'm like, I got to set this time, all right. <laughs> I think the most notable or like important tournament for me prior to Battle of BC would have to be Genesis. I was on antidepressants at the time and um, I remember I like lost to Crudo and I didn't really care. And then I lost to John Wick um, for 65th. Um, and I was just like, all right, that's cool. And I just walked off and I was just like, what? I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, why do I feel this way? Um, I also have really bad anxiety. So at these tournaments, I can't eat or anything like that. But I noticed on the antidepressants, I was just like, I didn't feel any, anything really. And I was like, do I, do I not care about losing? I was like, what the fuck? And I was just like, I had like a, like a wake up call. I'm like, I don't think this is who I want to be right now. Like if I'm like going to play melee, I want to revel in these losses. I don't want to care about winning. I want to, I don't want to be in the, the middle ground. I want the highs and the lows, you know? So um, while on this trip, I just decided to stop taking them. Um, and that was really important for me, you know? It just like, has definitely changed the trajectory of my life where if I honestly kept taking them, I probably would have quit competing because I just didn't have the passion anymore. Um, this again isn't like a, to be clear, isn't like a detriment towards antidepressants or anything like that. Like I think they're wonderful and they help so many people, but it's just not for everyone, you know? I've talked a lot with Josh about like mental health and what it means to be okay and it's it's always a learning process and i hope that he continues to learn about himself in the way that he learns about the game you know after stopping taking them i'm like oh i actually don't feel sad right now because i'm doing the things i want to do i'm like oh that's the secret <laughs>
I know, as somebody who has had Josh Sora living at his house for the past like two months, uh, Josh has been preparing endlessly. Like Josh is someone who's just through his brief time in America this year has uh, gone through a ton of improvement himself. If, like if I had to guess, I'm definitely biased because he's my friend, but I have a firsthand look into the work ethic and what he's doing and what he wants out of his life. I think Josh will be a top 10 player for sure. Uh, he's about a double four stock Sora. It, it is scary, but Sora, Sora answering back. No, oh, he's not. No, he's not. We, Blur, no, it's we, over. No. Boy, 46%. Look, guys, look away. Sora's better than that. Don't. Oh, my gosh. Look, that doesn't represent him. I'm going to tell you this right now. That does not represent Sora. He's amazing. Leffen's just hot right now. It happens. I wanted to perform well. Um, I was really focused. I was like, I'd been practicing a lot and I wanted to like just do a lot better than I had been doing in the last tournaments. And I came ninth, losing a last stock game to Ghidorah. And I was like, oh, that would have been my first top eight. Giant stall. No, he goes super, super low. Oh, he finds that, but he gets the forward smash out. This should be it. And Ghidorah takes it in game five. Oh, no! No! Yeah. God damn it! God, God damn it! He actually outplayed the fuck out of me in Battle of BC. When I was like panicking, he just ran across the stage and grabbed me. I'm like, holy shit, he's never done that in his life. I'm like, this is crazy. I have been talking shit to him the whole tournament about how I would wash his, uh, his peach that he can play on a box controller. And he's like, no, you can't, you're stupid. I'm like, yes, I can, it's my best matchup. And then, so after he lost, he immediately came and found me and said, play my box peach right now. So that's how he took it. And then he was sad um, and we talked about it. And that, that was that was one of the times when I realized he, he broke down exactly what happened and what he needed to do later. And then we just played melee together. Dude, one of my mates um, was just like, why aren't you going to Gong? And I'm like, I don't have money. And he's like, you came here to game though, bro. And I'm like, yeah, I know, it's not my fault. And he's just like, fucking, let me sort you out, man. And he fucking just booked me a flight, the absolute homie. I'm always looking to elevate people who I just really believe in, whether it be like Melee or whether it be like, I don't know, being funny or something I value or think is cool that I think other people will also value. So I was just like, we can't let Josh man go to waste because he could win these tournaments. I didn't realize how much I wanted to come until I saw like the pop-up that the flight was booked. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, one more dude, one more shot. Especially with Battle of VC being so close, right? Like ninth place, nearly had my first top eight. And yeah, it fucking spoke for itself, dude. So like glad I got to come. I kind of washed everyone before answer, to be honest. Like a 3 out of Kalindi. Yeah. I don't know what the laser is trying to Ooh, swag what a out of it. Lots of damage on. Oh, that down air was nuts. Yeah. The, the, the down air follow yeah, down. Yeah, sealed it. Fat Tino scared me. That, that was the one I was scared about the most. The UK boys are fucking scary. Those lads would be like, bro, Fat Tino's gonna take your wallet and your keys, bruv. He's gonna sort you out, man. And I'm just like, oh shit. That was like the night before when I'm on commentary with like watching his set. He's pointing, he's like, you're next, bruv. You're next. And I'm like, that's so funny. Um, I, I was playing him and I was just like, all right, he's, I got to play really controlled. He had one mix up on me that I stopped falling for and started killing him for. I found out like my, my opening, my spot, I'm sorted now. Like I can just do this now. The first thing I thought when I saw arms in my bracket was we have one Yoshi back home named Zorsi. And I was like, fuck, I should have played him more. Cause I always ghost him. You got one fucking Yoshi at home, you're already beating. I'm like, ah, sorry, things have come up, you know? And always be like, ah, he's like, all right. <laughs> I feel bad, but he plays fucking Yoshi, fuck that guy. Oh, <laughs> Yoshi. Fiction said this once about fighting Yoshi. He said, don't attack where Yoshi is. Attack where you think Yoshi's going to be. Oh, I, I, my heart hurts for Amsa because he hit the egg so cleanly. And Josh Man takes it. It gives you, I guess, I guess knowledge on your opponent's side. Right? Like the more threats you represent, 
the better it is for you as a player to win. Getting this game, being up 2-0 is going to be big. And you can see the pop off right there from Josh, man. He knows how important that is. I'm still too. I'm still. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. Game five. Game five. Like the tiniest little pop off. Smiling. Yeah. Loving the challenge. Yes, always, right? Game five. Josh, man, knows this is huge. Would be, I imagine, the biggest win of his career. Ready, go! He knows he can't overcommit. Oh yeah, Ops is low-key good at the stage. I forgot about that. Great, right? like Baron Air is great. Like, yeah, we'll take we'll take a, a trade to get Yoshi off stage. Ops is gonna do that crazy reverse yeah. ledge crab egg. Something like that. Have a drop shield. Run away, shoot lasers. Yep. I mean, what else do you need to do? I mean, better better care. Like, you literally have to treat it like as the equivalent of getting chain grabbed by, I don't know, Axe on FB, right? Like, it's, you gotta consider it one hitting his death. So you gotta. Not a bit on the trade. No, no, no. What we saw last match. And I just gotta wait for the air dodge. Okay, this is totally doable. Oh, I mean, they both know exactly how this is gonna yeah. end, right? Yeah. Nair double jump, okay, got away with it once. Is he gonna full ops again? No, he's, he's going for something else. He's trying to find such okay. a quality opening. Oh, that was, oh, that was such a big Ooh. chance. Double back air, keep him safe. That's it. Wow. And I was like, how does that hit? And I'm like, yes, come. I didn't realize how fucking like, he knew what I was and I won. I'm like, no more dino! Yes! It's done! Oh my god. I've been fucking practicing with mono and uh, egg money fucking all weekend. And those cunts helped me a fuck ton to get that. I was so happy, bro. Finally showing up at a fucking tournament, dude. Oh, it hits, dude. It fucking hits. I love this shit, dude. I will never fucking stop playing until I probably break my hands. <laughs> mono and um, egg money, they were just like, I'm like, can you guys just do like max length, like, overshoots with Yoshi so I know where I can dash dance. As long as I know where I can move and what I'm looking out for, I think I'm golden. Um, so they were doing that a lot and they were like helping me through some shit. Found out you can get out of the egg by doing full two rotations. Two full rotations of your fucking your analog stick and you pop out. So I was doing like pop out drilling him. Um, just really small tips that carry you a lot in this matchup, in that matchup in particular. So like that helped a lot. That I was like able to have like a fundamental game plan, at least spacing wise, but really carried me. This tournament was really surprising for me because I just felt really cool, calm, and collected for all of it. Even then, like, I didn't realize how much pent up energy there was. I was like, okay, like, like I was telling you, I was thinking like very clearly about like the mix ups I was playing and stuff like that. Um, I was just really trying to fucking stay focused and they, they paid off. I couldn't believe, dude, I couldn't believe the last up air hit. I'm like, he's just gonna SDI, we're gonna have to play so much more sloppy melee. And then he killed him, I'm like, oh, nice. That's sweet. That was winner's quarters into playing JMook. JMook's a bit of a demon of mine. He first time I, we played, he 3 0 would me, he fucked me up. I was like, ah shit. I'm like, alright, I'm pretty bad against Shig. And then the next time we played, which was at um, we played at Summit, it was game five again. Five. Is he gonna keep composed or no? Oh, oh, there's oh, the reverse. Yeah. Or is JMook gonna silence the game? Okay. Very wow. good stuff. Yeah. Alright, all right, game five. This time, like on game four, it was last hit. And I, I started, that's the only time I've ever thought this tournament. I can win this. And that you, the second you see the, see the trophy, you crumble. And then his composure was insane. I was so shook by game five that he just fucking whooped on me. And I was like, Ugh. Goes for the charge oh, as well. And that's Jay gonna do it. Jay Mook in top eight winner's <laughs> side. And what a set we just got. It's been so good mentally this whole tournament. I fucked it in the most like important spot. You know, I've never been in that spot about to play for like winners top eight. Like, are you kidding me? So much. And like, it finally broke my mental. I'm like, shit. And props to him. He's just the king of the mental. Big headspace advocate, that guy. Um, I mean, it's working, you know? Like he's, he's on the up and up. It was honestly a bit unceremonious because I had to play Geo. He's like one of my closest mates here. And it was just like a 3-0 of which like, I was like, oh, okay. That looks sweet. And I felt really bad because he's never made a top eight either. And we both were just like beforehand, we we're like, you know, no matter what happens, neither one of us gets mad. Um, but like, obviously you're gonna be fucking gutted that you were just that close to top eight and didn't make it. But um, I was still like, whoo. <laughs> Thank you.
Walt, I honestly can't get over how evenly matched this has been. Every single stock has been answered back and forth. We are down to the last stock. It is only the first game. Oh, no. Oh, my god! Look, everyone, look away. I was like, oh, I'm like, dude, I might have killed him off that shine. Because I shined him, and then the game crashed. I'm like, fucking hell. Um, and I immediately tweeted out, like, um, would have killed him off that, by the way. Just, <laughs> yeah. But I just like was like, oh, that's so annoying. But then I was like, oh, well, this just happens. And he seemed fine about it, too. Um, and he just laughed it off. That changed the whole set, I think. I think um, going from a close game to getting three stocked is what kind of tilted him initially. Um, there was actually one point in the set, interestingly enough, it was during Pokemon Stadium game, where I dash attacked him at 41. He kind of did like let go of his controller a little bit and he just let himself die off the bottom. And I was like, is your controller okay? Like I asked him and he just like ignored me. And I was like, is he just tilted? Like that took me out of the game actually. I was like, is he just tilted? Like I don't understand what's going on. And then he just started like spamming up tilt out of tilt. So I'm like, okay, so he's just tilted. I think he's one of the best Fox Dittoers, honestly. His tech chasing is like insane when he's on. Like people will always like praise him for his tech chasing. Um, I was like, okay, it's gonna be really important for me not to give him too many openings here. You know, play the game smart. Like just don't give him the grabs. Don't give him the grabs, you know, like try and scrap properly with him. His back is against the wall though. Last stock for our Canadian representative potentially. And that's not how you oh wanna go out. God. Unfortunate, unfortunate SD. Moki not too happy with that one will exit Gommel at seventh place, but holy moly, Josh Man was just on another level those last few games. What actually helped me the most was I played a friendly set with him, prior, and I just didn't drop a game. And he was just like, I'm playing so bad, I'm playing awful. And I'm like, maybe, I'm playing pretty good though. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And I'm like, it can go both ways when one guy's playing bad, one guy's playing good. And I thought I was playing fucking hard. I was hitting all my shit, I'm like, nice. And then he came on the stage, I'm like, what's different? You know, what's different right now? in a show like and again my mindset was so good just no like intrusive thoughts really calm wasn't thinking about the win at all until it was fucking over and it carried into like the last stock they had like a pretty nice combo and i'm like oh that was good and then like i saw the up smash i'm like all right when's he coming down he didn't come down i'm like that's great news <laughs> like that's over i am a little bit cheesy in the fox ditto i always forward throw in the corner and then i play like big reads and i can just like kill him and when I read him, I'm like, this cut's very mad. And I'm like, I'm not thinking about the crowd or anything like that. I'm like, oh, he's tilted. He doesn't like that. Because it is, it's so tilting to get hit by that. It's just such a good momentum uh, boost when you gimp him like that. And you're just like, oh, should I roll to the corner, bro? Because you feel like math for a second. You're like, yeah, it's a field press. <laughs> you do like a, when he's upping, I like double jumped out there and up him out of his charging Firefox. And I heard it, I'm like, yeah, you fucking cunts like that. You like that shit? Doesn't get the shine though. <laughs> Not a reversal quite yet. That was a moment where uh, Josh Man really could have capitalized, but he is still off stage. Okay, rising there. Oh, oh my, my god. I think some and people call that the Swanton Bomb of Storm. Oh, I man. mean, you know, I won. I just, I, I was like, like, cause obviously the boys are cheering me. I'm like, fuck yeah, lads, you know, we keep going. I was more happy about the progression more than like the set itself, to be honest. Which I was surprised about. I thought I'd be a lot more hyped about that. Here we go. Oh, oh, see, oh my see, god, see, that's see. it. Oi, 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 Josh Man with the 3 eliminates IBDW at fifth place. But I think having my energy at that level is what let me stay calm and cool as well in the first place, um, which is pretty crucial. So I'm happy, I'm fine to just like not have an explosion of energy for a win like that if it means also I get to play great, you know? I really wanted to play Zane more because like, again, that's just like my, my best matchup. So when like, you've got like one of the best players in the world playing your best matchup, it's like, it's different. It's a different game. He makes me think about the matchup really differently. You know, I just wanted to just like really push my comfort zone, you know, because I love already being in my comfort zone, but when someone's making that like harder, that's a really cool feeling. I, I know I can beat him, but I, I knew I wasn't ready, you know, he's just better at this point, you know, it's not a matchup where having a shot at beating him or like having a good punish game is enough. With Fox, sometimes that's just enough, bro. You get enough grabs, you hit your tech chases, sweet. That matchup's so scrappy. You really got to fucking earn it against Zane, man. The games were all really close. Um, close through, oh, close through, oh. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's just better than me right now. So I was like, I did the best I could. You know, I felt like I played great. No qualms. I just got to go home and figure out what the fuck happened. I just got to practice way more. That's right. was fucking sick, man. I mean, even prior to um, like any of the results or anything like that, just meeting all the UK lads, they just made me feel like I was at home. Those boys are so similar to Aussies in so many ways. I was like, fuck, this is good. And there was just so many great people I met throughout. Like, 
at this tournament specifically who like I never I, I wouldn't have met them if I didn't get to come you know like T.O. Joe is just like awesome he's just like so nice he was really accommodating like we had a bracket issue that he was trying his best to fix he was like I'm sorry if I can't I'm like dude you are doing your absolute best you know um, all the TOs were really nice the games were fun the top eight was exciting I really liked it I had a great time at Gumball I want to thank you to Anthony as well for letting me come here like it, it's it's crazy what happened because of that um, all the Aussies, the UK crowd. Um, yeah, dude, I wouldn't be here without my mates, honestly. Like those people that believe in me, like it means the world to me and I love them a lot. I will never fucking stop playing until I probably break my hands. Break my hands. Right, because you're thinking, right? oh, it might get sold up. And that's oh. going to do it. It's Pokemon yeah. Stadium. The, with the Michael Jordan broken arm, flu mm. game. Wow. Josh. Yeah, when I accidentally washed my eggs, that was bad. Chat, do you guys not wash your eggs? I accidentally put them in the sink and I was like, wow, this actually tastes kind of nice.